Would our students like to lead us in the flag salute? Excellent, thank you. Sunshine Law Statement, all requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act have been met for this meeting of the Board of Education in the Borough of Ordell. Notice that this meeting was filed with a record in town news and all persons requesting such notice. Mr. Darian, would you read the mission statement? The Ordell Public School District is dedicated to the ongoing pursuit of educational excellence through comprehensive, innovative curriculum and instruction. The district is committed to providing opportunities for social, emotional, and academic discovery to foster curiosity, courage, and character. Our goal is to prepare our students to become lifelong learners who are self-directed, resilient, responsible, productive citizens. Thank you. Roll call. Mr. Acosta? Here. Mrs. Negum? Here. Mrs. Downey? Here. Mr. Griffin? Here. Mrs. Norian? Here. Mrs. Walker? Here. Mr. Walsh? Mr. Darian? Here. Mrs. Nichols? Here. At this time, we will open to the public for agenda items only. Okay, not seeing any, we'll move forward. I think we'll reverse order and I'll let you do the presentations first. When I realized that we only had three board meetings left this year, I wanted to make sure that I brought in some of our students to show you some of the work they've been doing with the computer science and design thinking standards. So we have some kindergartners here today and also some third graders along with uh, Mrs. Hawley, Mr. Hagopi, and um, Mrs. Cataldo and Ms. Mertens. Ms. Mertens and Mrs. Cataldo have been two of our leads in terms of designing um, the curriculum. So I'm going to pass it off to them. I appreciate that the mic is almost tall enough for me, so I know it'll be good for the kindergartners. <laughs> a couple of years ago, we started looking at how could we bring in um, computer thinking into our kindergarten and programming in without having our students on the computers all the time. Because developmentally, for our youngest students in the building, it's not always best for them to be on so much screen time. So we did some research, and Ms. Mertens worked really closely with us, and we found this great programming tool called Kibo. And it looks like building blocks, but you can use it to code and our kindergartners are going to come up and teach you about it today. So I'd like to introduce Skylar, Milo, Claudia, Daria, Arjun, and Peyton. You can come on up with Miss Mertens. She needs first, and then Milo, you take it out, okay? So you get first. Okay, Daria, take it. Do 
Let's get the body. Let's give her the body. Is this the body? Then you take two motors. Then you take two motors out. Okay, so here's a point. Are those the motors? Are they Yeah. Is this, do I have the right Make sure. Make sure green dots are on the bottom. Okay, so check every one. Oh, this side. Here. Slow learner. <laughs> okay. You check this? You check that one? Check this. Can I do it okay? Yeah, it's good. Okay. Okay. Good. You're all good. Here we are. Here we are. And then you get the two wheels. That must be these. Is this the wheel? Is this the wheel? Okay. The O ring has to be in the middle. You can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. I don't know if I can do it. Mrs. Norian, they've beat you each time, by the way. <laughs> just, just telling, just saying, no, just saying. From the peanut gallery. It does go the. I have it right. Okay. <laughs> Just because you practice at home. And then if that's the case, then the big one has to be in the middle. Okay. This side. Okay. Like that? Like that. Okay. You have to get the light bulb. Give our volunteer round of applause. <laughs> he built the robot. Thank okay, you. I so built the robot. Please, okay. <laughs> you go back to your seat, and we'll show you what we're going to do with it. Okay. Okay. This one stays here. Take out your shoulder. Or just your heel with your shoulder. Okay, so in the box, there's a bunch of coding blocks that look like this, and they have little barcodes. Um, Peyton, can Kibo read the words? Can Kibo read the pictures? Yes. Can Kibo read the barcode? Yes. So Kibo can read the barcode, so that's how the robot knows what to do. But the students know what the robot can do based on the picture and the word. So we work with the robot to figure out, to put the code together, and we're going to do something special. All pieces are very durable.
Okay, are we ready? Yeah. When we say run program, press the button. Ready? Set. Run program. You put your Kivo in, you put your Kivo out, you put your Kivo in and you shake it all about. You do the Kivo pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Did all of your programs work perfectly? No! <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah! Did we have some bugs? Yeah! But that's okay. Nice try. High five. All right, clean up, clean up, clean up. Clean up, clean up, clean up. Clean up. So our kindergarten programmers will bring around one kit so you can see them and ask any questions. One of the things that I love about kindergarten is Miss Mertens has brought, brought this passion to her class, but she's also been turnkeying it to all of the kindergarten classes. And they've all adopted the use of the word bug as a way to work through mistakes and create some growth mindset in their kindergarten classrooms. So sometimes in math they experience a bug, sometimes in writing or reading they experience a bug, and it's really helped to normalize the idea that we learn from our mistakes, because the same thing happens when we program Kibo. Do you have any questions? They're bringing Kibu's body. Yes. I, ju I just have to say, not only are they really knowledgeable about what they're doing, but they work together. I saw them team playing, talking it over, which is remarkable. A lot, because we don't have a Kibo kit for each student, it's not really created to be a one-to-one -one program. It's meant to build the collaboration. They really do have to work together. So I, I have a comment. When I was um, an internship, I was uh, in the aerospace industry, and I worked for a company that had 5,000 engineers in one building. Well, actually, it was one complex. It was a couple of buildings. And back then, all the programming was done with punch cards. And they would program uh, their applications by stacking the punch cards and then sending them out to execute uh, through the mainframe overnight and then the following day they would get a, a green bar report uh, showing them the result of the of their cards and if they got the cards in the wrong order uh, or if they didn't punch the cards correctly the program didn't execute as as originally envisioned and it was very it's feel like a very similar process it was really interesting Do we have enough of these devices for all the um, kindergarten classrooms? How many do we have, Victoria? So we have 10 Kibos. Uh, part of that is just in case if there's bugs with some and then a teacher can have one. So usually each class kind of divided um, their classroom up into eight groups or less. Um, we coordinated and worked with the fifth grade to get fifth grade Kibo helpers that would come down and support the children because as you can see, scanning can be a huge frustrating component and the fifth graders worked so wonderfully with all the kindergarten students and um, I was able to coordinate that with the fifth grade teachers at a time that worked for their schedule so that we could have the extra support and they were great mentors and they thoroughly enjoyed it. 
Um, so using the cooperation and the small group model, but also having that older peer to then go to if the teacher was working with a group helps the kindergartners be able to share the eight kibos throughout the class. All right, so we are now going to move on to our third graders. So one of our jobs is to look at how we can start with kindergarten and build the skills. So um, for third grade, we brought two types of robots for you to do. And do we know if we're doing dot and dash first? or Ozobots. We're going to do Ozobots first, and we're going to do them on the floor. Yeah. We'll bring the mic down, and I think, I'm, I'm hoping we have Alexa and James, and I'm hoping they'll be able to tell you about the Ozobots. Hello, my name is James Koth, and um, I'm going to be doing color, and she's going to be doing speed. So there's five sensors um, on the Ozobot, and there's um, in the middle, there's the color sensor, and then the other four uh, sensors are the black line sensors. Um, you have to turn um, one click to go on. You do a double click to, um, like, do make it running and go on the black line and through the colors. Um, then it, um, on the when you turn it on, on the you put it on the black dot to start programming it, and uh, asymmetric codes means different commands based on direction and symmetric codes means the same commands either way. So they're going to do them down on the floor because they're so little, so you can see them. It's all based on color. So what did you find out about the color? James. So I found out that, um, so there's red, so green, red, and blue in um, the colors, but we use Crayola markers to find out different colors. We tested it on a plain piece of paper, and we found that there could be more colors like purple, pink, and orange. And what color does it work, Alexa? Brown. Why? Because it's too dark. So they experimented on their own by taking other markers to see if it would work, and once they found out it worked, they kept on to see what different colors they could put in there. So James will be doing, his will change colors, Alexa's will change colors and speed. Can we use this technology to help with drop off and pick up? <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> but I have a comment about that. Okay, go ahead. Um, since, since, the, since the streets are black, it would not know where to go because um, it only because once it um, senses like black, it will just go anywhere on the black. Hmm. So in 
their next oh, lesson, okay. they're gonna be learning how to change the direction so it'll actually move sideways and then go straight. So they're experimenting right now with knocking the bowling pins down at the end, and the next lesson will be actually putting it in direction and having to go which way it should go. So what did you guys like most about working with these? Alexa, why don't you come up and answer that? Um, Hold all those dates. Um, was the, like the change in colors and the speed. Mm. And Alexa also found when she was working with her partner, what did you do, Alexa, with your both designs? Uh, they connected them. They connected them. So they were experimenting as they were playing. So they actually took each one of their own papers and put them together to make, to make it go in a longer direction and do more. So what, why they're really good is because they're, the whole time it's hands on and they keep changing what it can do. And you get to tell what you like the most, Mom. Yeah. Move the microphone up when you feel it. Um, what I like most about it is um, that. Um, there's one color sensor, and then there's more line sensors, so it has a little more knowledge of where to go on the line. Um, did you guys discover any bugs? Um, like a different time I had it, um, it wouldn't change, like, colors and um, I kept on trying to like make it bulkier make it smaller and yeah did the other bug that they discovered was if you didn't connect the colors it doesn't do anything it just keeps going it just goes straight so so you ironed out your bugs right mm -hmm. yes right. Great job. We're going to move back to the stage, and we have Liz Lizzie and Julian who are going to work and show you dot and dash. Um, hi, um, so, um, we actually have two dashes here, and what happens, we actually, like, sort of, like, we have, like, a code, and we sort of, like, name them, so, um, this one here, that's Mango, and the other one next to him, that's Bo, and, um, Why is his name Bo? Um, Bo's name is Bo, because when we went to Ms. Shalom's room, to look for robots. My favorite is Mango, so we got Mango. And now we found this robot. Do we have little pieces of we have little pieces of tape on the back? So Bo did not have a piece of tape. So we decided to use him to get him some attention. And we called him Bo because this is Julian's idea. Because the first thing he's ever going to do is be at a board of education meeting. <laughs> <laughs> they, they told me that today when we were getting ready. <laughs> okay, um, so when we have dot and dash, we use, there's two ways.
colors, you can code them, and they're Blockly and Wonder. Now, Wonder is sort of like a string of code, and we have used Blockly, which is little blocks like this. And now, now you know how we said Bo, we just met, we met him today. Well, Mango is going to just meet him too. There is a very essential part of our code. It's these little yellow blocks. They're called weight blocks. And it makes sure they both don't talk at the same time. <laughs> so this program we it kind of this was kind of quick but there's way there's way more things you can do with these like there's accessories so we can like launch little ping pong balls and it can has like variables so if you want to do very precise m uh like forward and backward centimeter amounts you can like make it down to the, like very pers like the 10 yeah it's no, it, no it's like um you have 10 it goes in intervals of 10 centimeters you can go 10 centimeters and 20 centimeters but and when and like 20 centimeters is like was like so um so you this one? one if you have like so when we were we've been doing this in the strong room it has like higher things, they're about one square foot. So if you're in the middle of one of them, it takes about 40 centimeters to get to the middle of the next one. Did you find bugs? Uh, so we were having like a few bugs with the sink. So we would have to replay it like over and over and over again because sometimes the sink would be like one second off or one second early and they would talk at the same time which was a little ridiculous, but. <laughs> it's like being in class. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to do those like little, those loop-de-loop, -loop like the things were, the yeah, like the loops. Like there's this thing called the set wheel speed and it will like make sure one goes a little faster So, like, the set wheel speed makes her, like, one goes a little slower. So this will go in, like, a smaller circle, like this, and this will go in big circles, making, like, loop the loops, which was pretty cool. Um, another thing was, like, I don't know, they were, like, so also, we were, like, doing the blockly, like, coding, but we were like trying to code like problems. So there was like different divisions. So Julian was in the third grade division and I was in the fourth grade division because those are our grades. And basically what happened was you had a team. So um, I was on a team with some other kids from my grade and so was Julian. And what we were doing was we were taking, it, was, it would say a problem in its requirements. So you'd have these big mats that are taped out on the floor 
And what we would do is it would say, you, should st you have to start in A1. It was like, sort of think of it as like battleship coordinates. It's like A1. You have to start at A1, then land at A, and then you have to land at C3, then circle around B3. So there's all these different problems, and, and basically every year there's different problems, and there, this, this one was spacey. So I personally, and so we tried working together on, on the problems, except we um, left, like, we got, we're running out of time. So what we decided to do was each person was assigned a problem, and I personally had a problem where I had to start, start like, imagine this is the thing, like on the iPad right here. You'd start in this corner, and you had to go up here, loop to loop, go here, loop to loop, and end here, and have a celebration. So I actually copied the same celebration that I used for that, because I, I think that person can go in, yeah. Uh -huh. It's really funny. <laughs> so, so, um, um, the, um, also, um, it's actually really fun. So, do you guys want to try? Uh, any questions? I'm not sure we have time. Uh, any, any question? I would just like to add that the PTA generously funded a grant for us to purchase the dot and dash robots and the iPads and the, uh, and the Ozobots. So the Ozobots we've had for a couple of years, um, we've used them at recess and the dot and dash we used in a pilot program this year where we had um, second graders, third graders, and fourth graders after school working with Ms. Shaw, Mrs. Cataldo, and Mrs. Mertens in a pilot after school coding class. So that's where they got the intro introduction to it. it. We do plan on continuing to grow this over time. Obviously bringing in robots into the classrooms is extremely beneficial. It is a little bit expensive, but we love that the PTA is working with us and helping us find ways to incorporate programming into our daily lesson planning. Thank you. Yes. Students, thank you so much. We can take a two minute break if you would like to leave and we can continue our meeting. You're welcome to stay. We always love when people stay, but. Did we get all of the Great job, great job. Every day gets like God. I don't think so. Well, I mean, I don't know why they pick certain grades. Yeah, there must be a thing to get together for some manner. I guess. Oh, that's a good question. In our typical meeting. <laughs> yeah. They didn't want to hear about the check requests, you know. <laughs> okay, so.
So um, those are just some of the materials that we've been using this year. Um, there has been a lot going on since our last meeting. As you know, we've had three performances of Beauty and the Beast, and it truly was a spectacular um, night. People were so impressed with the auditorium as well. We forget that we were in here all the time, yet to the community at large, it was their first time in the auditorium. And I actually, I chuckled when they were on stage because the color scheme is actually perfect for Beauty and the Beast. So I thanked Mr. Butcher for that. But I think Mr. Butcher, Mrs. Reese Beater, and Ms. Cochia did a wonderful job. Uh, we also, last night, had our art show in NPR A and B. I think we'll be taking over C next year, too. It was a, a packed event. Every student in the school has at least two pieces in the art show. Well, at 801 students, that's a lot of art to go up. And what I really love about the art show right now is art history has always been important to me, and everything that was displayed was connected with an artist that students studied. We also had sixth grade field day today, and from what I hear, it was one of the best sixth grade field days we've had in a very long time. And I don't know if that was the fire truck at the end or just the day overall, but the sixth graders seemed incredibly ecstatic, and I know that Mrs. Hawley visited every class to tell them how impressed she was with their behavior during the day as well. And our Odyssey of the Mind teams have arrived at Michigan. They will compete in their first event tomorrow morning, long term, and they will compete in Spontaneous on Friday. So I'm excited to share their results. The, uh, the results show is actually live streamed. The opening ceremony tonight is live streamed and the results show is live streamed. And so if you have nothing to do, um, it's really interesting because it's an entire stadium filled with the most excited um, children and actually even college students because there are college teams that compete as well. But I did check this morning. We have over 60 teams in our division, and they don't just represent the United States. We will be competing against teams from Mexico, Poland, Switzerland, Singapore, China, and South Korea. So it is quite the competition this year. This is one of the first years where teams overseas are back. So I think they're going to have a great time. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Marmora. Uh, no report tonight. Okay, I'll go back to my report. I just wanted to mention that we received four thank you notes. I will pass them around. One from the OEA for the uh, delicious breakfast. One from Melissa Abgerino for the bagel and coffee breakfast. One from the kindergarten team, same thing. And then um, a nice thank you note um, from Leslie Macklin, thank you very much for the lovely Wednesday evening to celebrate Educator of the Year. I greatly appreciate the support and kind words. I have truly en enjoyed my 27 years at the school and look forward to several years more. So I'll send them this way first and then if you could just pass them back. And that's all I have. Let's move on to minutes. Review of May 10th, any questions or comments, please email Mr. Marmora. We have approval of April 26th. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve the minutes of April 26th. Second. Second by Mrs. Negum. Was that Mrs. Negum? Any questions? Call a question. Mrs. Acosta? Yes. Mrs. Negum? Yes. Mrs. Downey? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mrs. Norian? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Darian? Yes. Mrs. Nichols? Yes. Committee reports. Mr. Darian, would you take administrative? Uh, yes, I'd like to introduce items A1. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mrs. Norian. Any questions? Call the question. Mrs. Acosta? Yes. Mrs. Negum? Yes. Mrs. Downing? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mrs. Norian? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Darian? Yes. Mrs. Nichols. Yes. Buildings and grounds. Mr. Darian, before you make the motion, I would like, I spoke to Mr. Marmar about this, I would like to make a change to the facility charge to add cleaning fees to be determined. So if you want to make your motion with that. Okay. Um, so I have no update uh, from my last, our last meeting. Um, we have a um, B and G 
uh, meeting scheduled in June. Um, so with that, all I have t uh, tonight is this item I'd like to introduce, B1 for the Ordell Summer Rec Program um, with the amendment of under facility charge we are to add cleaning fees as to be determined. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Mrs. Walker. Any questions? Um, Mrs. Walker? I just have a question on um, B1 under facilities charge, $15 per area per day. What, what does that mean? Per classroom. If they use four classrooms, it'll be per classroom. Oh, that's Or whatever the area, area they're using. That's yeah. the area. Any other questions? Call the question. Mrs. Acosta? Yes. Mrs. Negum? Yes. Mrs. Downey? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mrs. Norian? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Darian? Yes. Mrs. Nichols? Yes. Curriculum, Mrs. Negum? Uh, nothing to report today. Uh, finance, Mr. Griffin? Yes. Um, we did meet last week um, and went through interviews for a new BA. Um, so those candidates, you'll be learning more about that soon. Um, past that, I would say go ahead and make a motion for D1 through D12. I second. Second by Mrs. Negum. Any questions? Mrs. Walker? Um, I have a question on D10, approval of purchase of Chromebooks. Um, so we're talking about 91,000 plus. Didn't we just have Chromebooks ordered? Like we do it every year. Mrs. You want to tell which, um, Ms. Boses, which grades do we're doing? So every year, first grade gets a new Chromebook, and they use it for first, second, and third grade. And students get another new Chromebook in fourth grade, so they use it in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. So you'll see that purchase every year. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Call the question. Mrs. Acosta? Yes. Mrs. Negum? Yes. Mrs. Downey? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mrs. Norian? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Darian? Yes. Mrs. Nichols? Yes. Uh, Mr. Walsh is not here, so he, I guess he can report on his meeting and his vote at our next meeting. Personnel, Mrs. Walker? Um, yes, thank you. I'd like to present F1. I'll second it. Second by Mrs. Norian. Any questions? Call the question. Mrs. Acosta? Yes. Mrs. Negum? Yes. Mrs. Downing? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mrs. Norian? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Darian? Yes. Mrs. Nichols? Yes. Policy, Mrs. Norian? Uh, no report. However, it appears we have a meeting set for um, the 31st at 1 o'clock. Uh, public relations, Mrs. Acosta? I have nothing to report. I don't think we need task force. Open to the public? <laughs> you want to admit now that you ate the whole pizza that we saw you carrying the box out for? <laughs> oh, yeah, we heard you cook the hot dogs today. Is that you? <laughs> well, I heard everyone like them. We didn't poison anybody, so that was good. <laughs> Any old or new business? Mrs. Walker? Just to say, I did go to the musical. Mr. Butcher set me up in a very nice seat, and uh, it was just wonderful. It's just amazing to see how they can facilitate all these kids that wanted to be in it were in it. And um, the change of who was Belle in this scene and then a new Belle in that scene, it was, it was really awe-inspiring. It was a great job by... Um, are three major preparers, but also um, so, um, it was supported by so many people. Uh, it was really wonderful. So my kudos to them. Good. Any other older new business? Just wanted to see, I loved the art show last night. It was awesome. 
loved all the artists that they do drew inspiration from, and the, the kids were amazing Good. with all their artwork. Mr. Griffin? Just, just echoing those comments. I mean, the, it's amazing. This building is a buzz with a lot of things happening. I think Ms. Bozios mentioned it, but I mean, the, the things that are happening here on a regular basis are amazing. And you know, you could feel the energy both in the, the musical. Everyone was excited to be here. You could tell they were excited to see the, um, the kids. You could tell they were excited to see the space. And the same was true last night. I mean, it was, yes, we should expand the art show to the next room because I was like, oh, this is a little crowded. <laughs> but uh, it was lovely. And the kids were just having a blast. And uh, it really, you know, it's a buzz, but it was just full of inspiration too. So I'm just echoing the comments. If no other old or new business, we need to go into a closed session for a personnel matter. Someone would like to okay. make a motion. Mr. Derry, would you like motion. to make, oh, Mrs. Norian, you want to make the motion? Sure. I'll second. Second by Mr. Darian. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, we don't know how long we're going to be. We may come out and take a vote, actually. We don't know yet. So. We'll take your own heads. Not about you, too. We're good? Yeah, okay. So um, I'd like if someone to make a motion to come out of closed session. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Aye. Who made that second? Mrs. Negum? Okay. I'm going to ask. Um, I'm going to put this under new business at the end of the agenda. If Mr. Darian would make a motion, the motion. Yes, I'd like to. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to um, submit a contract to the uh, county superintendent for review and approval. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Walker. Any questions? Call the question. Mrs. Negum? Yes. Mrs. Downing? No. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mrs. Norian? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Daring? Oh, Mrs. Nichols? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. Mrs. Nichols? Yes. Any other older new business? I move to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Walker. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good have night. Good Memorial Day weekend. Yep.